Okay, this is a set of 26 millimeter Makuni VM round slide carburetors. Very popular back in the day. And you find a lot of them on the old GSs, so the Suzuki GS models and Kawasaki KX models. Now, if you ever have a leak on the fuel rail, it's likely gonna be right here. There's a couple of things you gotta look at. There's these two nipples here. So there's a nipple here and here between the one and the two and the three and the four. And then there's a T right here in the center between the two and the three. So to replace those, kind of a chore, because you gotta get all this apart and get at these. Uh, the second part of that problem is they're no longer available. They don't make these again, they're kind of discontinued. So to find these parts here, good luck. Now sure, you can go on eBay and you might be able to source a set, but I did find a set of aftermarket ones and check out these ball and brass beauties. Look at those guys. I mean, they feel heavy, they're good, they're made out of brass, they're solid. Another thing I like about these is when you compare them to the original stuff, you look at the seals on here, that seal on the end of this T, you can't replace anything. There's no O-ring there. That's just molded plastic onto a piece of metal. Check out these aftermarket ones and look at that. You got a set of O-rings that are easily replaceable. So you could stick them in there and 10 years from now, if they start leaking, just replace the O-rings, you're good to go. So let's get to it. How hard can it be? Okay, here we go. So, you take your carb bank and you break it down until you got a table full of bits, just like this. Now, I didn't wanna waste your time showing you how I took this bank all apart because like the boys at Ultimate Cycle will tell you, It's just a carburetor. Any monkey can take it apart. Yeah, pretty much any monkey can take these things apart. The tricky bit is putting them all back together with no parts left over and actually have this thing work. That's the tricky bit. So, take your time. Lay out all your bits, keep everything in order, don't mix anything up. And once you have your replacement parts in hand, should be ready. Let's piece this puzzle back together. How hard can it be? Where do we start? All right, well, let's start here. We got these two carbs, the one and the two, and there's a little rubber hose that links the vents together. And then you can grab the brand new nipple, grease it up. That's some molly grease there. Uh, silicone based stuff just oh, grease up those o-rings and jam it in that first uh, hole and then all you gotta do now is line up the two carbs and yeah they just snap together there's really nothing to it now same idea here for the three and the four pretty much identical procedure you just grab that rubber hose and like I said that's just a link for the vents and again grease up the nipple and jam it home line up the other one the other carb there and if you got it right, they literally just pop together. There's no, no stress at all. Okay, now we got these two pairs of carbs. We wanna slam that T in the middle. So, more grease, grease up the ring and slam it in the hole. Yeah, we're still talking carbs here, guys. Keep your mind on the game. Line them up and they snap in perfectly, just like that. Now, because they're snapped in tight, that base plate, that backer plate there should line up beautifully. And you can see here, it does, lines up perfect. But before you go sticking it on, you got this cable guide. So the throttle cable uh, guide, this pulley thing here has to line up and get in there. And you need to put that on before you put the base plate on. Trust me, you can't do it after. So yeah, stick it on just like that. Flip it over, make sure it's free. And then you can flip it back over to lock this thing down. Now there's, I think, uh, two screws per carb. So that's eight in total. You don't need to see me doing that. Just jam them in, tighten them up, and you're good to go with that. Okay, next up you wanna put in these little choke forks. Now these are the little guys that are gonna grab the caps on top of those choke levers. And you can see, actually you can't really see it very good in that view, but uh, okay, now this one, this is the odd one out. It has the uh, sort of an extra long part to that link. So your choke cable actually slots into that. So kind of got to weave it into that spot there between the two and three. And then the number three, same idea. There's a good view. You can see how that fork just clips into that cap. Don't do the number four because it'll just fall off. There's nothing to hold it there. Now you got to go for this uh, rail. So this is the link rail that links all the chokes together. Kind of just weave it in. There's nothing to it. Lube it up. And there's a good look at how that spring setup is at the end of it all but don't bury it yet you need to put that washer on the end by the number four and then put on the number four now look at this there's a good view see that how that screw goes into the groove on that uh, link rod there you go tighten those all down check it works yep looking good 
All right. Next, we go for these slides. So the carb slides, don't mix them up. Make sure you got the one in the one and the two in the two. And there's the pretty easy. You just slide them in. The only thing you got to look at is that groove right there. So there's a groove that you have to line up with a pin on the inside of that carb and they just slide in. And then the next thing you really got to pay attention to is that you don't jam the end of that uh, needle into the uh, bottom of the carb without hitting the main jet. Okay, now take a look at this link rod here for those uh, slides. It is uh, directional. You got a little groove on the far end there that has to stay to the left side in this picture. And you'll see why in a second. So once you feed it through, just kind of thread it through all those little um, caps on the top of those uh, slides and the cable guide or the throttle um, cable. And then you got this little thing. This is what I was talking about. This um, little fork thing goes right into that groove and locks that uh, connecting rod so it doesn't flop around. And then all you gotta do is just get some uh, cap screws, the ones that came with it, lock them back in. So you're really just tightening um, this cam arm that's on the top of those slides, tight, tightening that to the connecting rod, that link rod. So there you go, everything functions. Now all you gotta do is put the caps on them. Don't need to show you how to do that. Just the gaskets and caps, you're good to go. And then there's these little rubber plugs um, that just cover up the end, sort of like dust caps, little butt plugs. There's one on each side. And then there's the um, idle adjust screw. Just lube that up. It's got a spring on it just to keep the tension on it. Um, and it just screws in easily there. Nothing to that. And then you got to feed in the spring. Now this thing is under a little bit of tension. This is what gives your throttle the, the snap back when you let go of your throttle. And you'll see here it, uh, it's pretty, pretty strong. There, perfect. All right, looking pretty good. We managed to get this puzzle put back together and we don't have any parts left over, so we must have done something right. I mean, other than the parts we replaced, these guys right here. And it looks pretty good, seems to function okay. So yeah, we're one step closer to getting the old GS750 back on the road. Um, it hasn't been without its obstacles, that's for sure. I made a few videos about it along the way and you might wanna check this one out here. It's pretty interesting. All right, I got stuff to do. See ya. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. See ya.